Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. If you haven't had a chance to see the interview I did with Alain Berset last week, he's the president of the Swiss Confederation. Um, and we've also uploaded an interview with Edward Dandy, who's the founder and CEO of Saiton Investments, which is uh, a, a business focused initially purely on real estate and uh, is now doing a lot more things and he's well worth listening to, he's very compelling. Macro thoughts, it's all about political and geopolitical volatility now. And that is emanating from one place, which is quite extraordinary when you consider that. The IMF reports the global expansion is still strong, but less even, more fragile and under threat. However, it upgraded Sub-Saharan Africa primarily off an upgrade of Nigeria. Nigeria and South Africa constitute 50% of Sub-Saharan African GDP. The US two-year Treasury yield touched its highest level since August 2008, and yesterday was at 2.607%. That's from FX Macro. And finally, a chart from Sun Chartist, uh, um, Chinese one death cross, he tweeted, or I guess she. Home thoughts, Mombasa, the International Space Station, is visible to the naked eye, if clouds allow, today at about quarter past seven in the evening. Um, that's from Ignacio, who pr produces these wonderful tweets. Now, Look at, listen to this, meerkat radio telescope images Milky Way's blazing heart. South Africa's newly inaugurated 64-dish meerkat radio telescope, a precursor to the square kilometer array, has imaged the heart of the Milky Way in unprecedented detail, revealing long magnetized filaments and the blazing core where a supermassive black hole lurks unseen at optical wavelengths. We wanted to show the science capabilities of this new instrument, said Fernando Camilo, chief scientist at the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. The center of the galaxy was an obvious target, unique, visually striking, and full of unexplained phenomena, but also notoriously hard to image using radio telescopes. Although it's early days with Meerkat and a lot remains to be optimized, we decided to go for it and were stunned by the results. Earth's sun orbits the galaxy's core at a distance of some 25,000 light years. While intervening gas and dust shroud at the hidden heart of the galaxy, where a supermassive black hole is known to reside, radio waves pass through to provide a glimpse of its hidden features. Meerkat's initial observations provide a tantalizing hint of things to come. And it really is an extraordinary photograph when you think about it. Who would deny that Tolstoy is a national treasure Kenya is a land of giants. This is Paul the Humble. Uh, talking about elephants, obviously, it was really tragic that eight rhinos died. The market value of rhino horn, eight rhino horn, is about eight million dollars. So it's not an insignificant uh, loss from a financial one, but also from an environmental one. You know, John Dunn, all that. Laid learn. World Cup victory parade set for the Champs Elysees. Lovely photograph, I thought. Political reflections. This is Badmi, the town at the centre of the now thankfully ended 20 year dispute between Ethiopia and Eritrea. David Pling. Now let's go back to yesterday, which was quite extraordinary theatre, real time. Just in Russia's Foreign Minister Lavrov by the way, is extremely bright, says the Putin-Trump talks went better than super. I found the press conference, the presser, mind-boggling, and it reminded me of a predator, read Putin, 
who has his prey captured can't quite believe it and every natural instinct is just to kill it off but obviously in this uh, scenario it's far better to keep the prey alive it seems today Trump gave Putin 10 years worth of anti-American propaganda all after a secretive 130 minute meeting Seth Abrahams he also spun wild conspiracy theories, floated a joint cyber security task force with the very enemies of America, who are now attacking our infrastructure, and kept anyone from being in the room with him and Putin, who could have confirmed he said anything to Putin, he says he did. If you're interested in watching the press conference in full, I got a link from the BBC. Trump called the two-hour-plus meeting very good start for everybody as the pool is somewhat forcefully ushered out. That's Margaret Lalev. Putin tells Trump the time has come to talk in a substantive way. Trump Putin it reminded me of a bank manager calling in his debts or the price, as I tweeted. In this uh, image from Mark Noller, President Putin's plane is seen landing behind schedule as he is his own to Helsinki Airport. I take you back to October 2015 when I was talking about something else, which was the intervention in Syria, and I called Putin a geopolitical grandmaster, and he is. And really, he's even more impressive when you consider his return on investment. Everyone keeps criticizing him for having an economy the size of Italy. He might have an economy the size of Italy, but he owns the world at this moment in time. MMA fighter Conor McGregor has been criticized for calling Vladimir Putin one of the greatest leaders of our time. Uh, this was a tweet from Anne-Marie. This one time I came face to face with Putin. And I take you then to an article I wrote in December 2016 when I was talking exactly about this intervention, election intervention, and I said, we have a deviate tomahawk. And I said, my starting point is the election of President Donald Trump, because hindsight will surely show that Russia ran a seriously sophisticated program of interference, mostly digital, I said. I then went to Don DeLillo, who I think is a prophetic 21st century writer, who writes as follows in one of his short stories. The specialist is monitoring data on his mission console when a voice breaks in, a voice that carried with it a strange and unspecifiable poignancy. He checks in with his flight dynamics, uh, flight dynamics and conceptual paradigm officers at Colorado Command. We have a deviate tomahawk. We copy, there's a voice. We have gross oscillation here. There's some interference. I've gone redundant, but I'm not sure it's helping. We are clearing an outframe to locate source. Thank you, Colorado. It's probably just selective noise, which is what the Republicans seem to be saying. You are negative red on the step function quad. It was a voice, I told them. We have just received an affirm on selective noise. We will correct Tomahawk in the meantime advise you to stay redundant. The voice, in contrast to Colorado's metallic pigeon, is a melange of repartee, laughter, and song, with a quality of purest, sweetest sadness. Somehow, we are picking up signals from radio programs of 40, 50, 60 years ago. Very interesting piece in the Daily Beast, what everyone but Trump knows, Russia is armed and dangerous, over the last decade, Russia has demonstrated a marked proclivity to use or threaten to use military force to achieve its foreign policy goals, particularly when it comes to ensuring compliance among regimes within its own sphere of influence. Putin, in the words of former U.S. Ambassador to Moscow, Michael McFaul, has anointed himself the leader of a renewed nationalist conservative movement fighting a decadent West, and is determined to re-establish his country as a leading player in international politics. 
The Kremlin has invested billions in sophisticated social media networks and information warfare techniques and employed them in an active measures campaign to destabilize relations between members of the Western Alliance and shape political developments within their societies in a manner congenial to Russian interests. That's right. Effective hybrid warfare operations and Russia's quest to regain great power status ultimately rest on the capabilities of its conventional military forces. That's why Putin refrained from undertaking provocative foreign interventions and political warfare against the West until his armed services had been thoroughly revitalized in the sweeping reform and reconstruction program. But what the Western Alliance really needs badly and soon is nowhere in sight. An American president fully committed to working with European allies to develop a grand strategy for dealing with Russia's multi-pronged assault on Western power and interests. And then Politico is saying Putin's attack on the US is our Pearl Harbor. In 2016, our country was targeted by an attack that had different operational objectives and a different overarching strategy. But its aim was every bit as much to devastate the American homeland as Pearl Harbor or 9-11. The destruction may not send pillars of smoke into the sky or come with an 11-digit price tag. And there's no body count or casualty statistics. But the damage done has ravaged our institutions and shaken our belief in our immovability. Two years on, we still haven't put any boats or men in the proverbial water. We still have not acted. Just today, President Trump, a beneficiary of this attack, exonerated the man who ordered it, Russian strongman Vladimir Putin. Fighting hybrid attacks requires an informed, prepared, mobilized population with the will to fight and to understand. The President of the United States is, dream, is, is disarming the American public in what would be the most important fight in our history. I tweeted, Mr. Putin is a grandmaster, and it all starts with recognizing him as such. Look at the ROI. Sasha Baron Cohen still has it. Watch this from Who is America, where it is remarkable. The US may be Germany's number one ally, but two thirds of Germans think that the US president is more dangerous than his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro dollar pushing higher, 117.41. Dollar index 94.39. Japanese yen 112.36. Swiss franc back below parity, 0.9956. The pound 132.63. The Australian dollar is at 0.7424. India rupees uh, 68.355. Record low is just above 69. South Korean won 112576, the Real 38594, Egyptian pound 17.9085, and the Rand is now top of its new range, 13.2263. Dollar index, I'll put up a three month chart. I still think it's rotating. It's, I don't think it's going to run away to the upside at this moment. Euro dollar, about which I was bullish, and I remain so. I feel it wants to trade higher. This is a chart from T Commodity. Headed towards 118.40, maybe even 120.60. Pound sterling, a bit, uh, but which I was more constructive since, but then I saw that May was capitulating again. Um, I, I, I'm a buyer on dips, um, but I think she's clearly as trapped as the Brexiteers are trapped, because if she hammers the Brexiteers, they're going to bring her down over the door to Corbyn. And uh, if, she, if, she, if she capitulates, she's now moving against the tide. Netflix plunged as much as 15% um, after they reported adding only 5.2 million users in the period. World's largest paid online TV network expects to add 5 million customers, a slower pace than a year earlier. Stock fell as low as $342 in extended trading and declined that it raised about $25 billion in market value. Netflix's second quarter revenue also came in short of projections post $3.19 billion compared with an average estimate of $3.94 billion. But the Los Gatos, California-based company hit a milestone. International customers accounted for a bigger piece of sales than domestic users, and that's the future for Netflix. India, Africa, think of those. 
Um, and then there's some specific reasons, the World Cup, some of the content. I think this is a great opportunity to buy into it, and I'm very bullish about it, even after a 14% fall in after-hours trading. Amazon continues to catch up with Apple in race to be the first trillion dollar market cap company. Commodity markets, well, oil has come off quite dramatically. This is a chart of WTI crude oil, uh, last trading at $67.17, has come off the boil quite dramatically. Gold, that's still hanging in there, 1244.50. And Peter, who a brand who I follow religiously, there is a significant sell signal in palladium and should be followed by sharply lower prices, he said. Emerging markets in May, 14th of May to be exact, I said this has all the ingredients for making a good old-fashioned crisis. But Bloomberg is reporting that after the sell-off, after the emerging market route, the likes of Investec are ready to start buying again. 5th of February, I was saying, interestingly, JP Morgan's MB spread is down to 258 basis points. I was calling it there. I said, how long this might last? Is anybody's guess, and it didn't. Emerging markets are on sale. Have a look at this from David Inglis. The last time emerging market stocks were this cheap, related to the US, the Lord of the Rings, the two towers we were showing in the cinemas. Biggest discount, discount now in 16 years. Pakistani KSE 100 death cross holding support breaks 10 year trend line, says the Sun Charters. China overloading poor nations with debt, says the OPEC, says OPEC CEO Washburn. China is saddling poor nations with unsustainable debt through large-scale infrastructure projects that are not economically viable. Um, in an interview with Reuters in Johannesburg, OPEC CEO Ray Washburn warned that the Chinese strategy created a debt trap for many poor nations. Just look at any project in these countries and they're overbuilding the sides. We try to have countries realize that they're indebting themselves to the Chinese. Sri Lanka formally handed over commercial activities in its main southern port in the town of Hambantota to a Chinese company in December as part of a plan to convert $6 billion of loans that Sri Lanka owes China into equity. Washburn voiced concern over a $360 million expansion of the airport in Lusaka, currently being carried out with financing from the Exim Bank of China. Um, and then saying, you know, the Chinese are in with ports and railroads and highways, things that we need to be in as a competitor. Instead of giving them a fish, we want to teach them to fish. They'll have to stand on their own two feet so we're not making loans or doing projects that don't make economic sense. I spoke about this in June this year when I said the first overarching point is that creditors are not Santa Claus and miscues will exact a very heavy price. Countries will be hand -band toted The president of Gabon is seen speaking with Vladimir Putin in this meeting in Moscow, uh, saying that Africa is in need of Russia's help. The DRC is clamping down on online media in a declared campaign against fake news, hate speech and cybercrime. Congo's Kabila has promoted two blacklisted generals in army shake-up, Amisi and Numbi, both close Kabila allies, were put on a Washington sanctions blacklist in 2016 for actions that undermine democratic processes in the DRC and to repress the political rights and freedoms of the Congolese people. Um, it shows you that Kabila is now thumbing his nose at the international community. He wouldn't see Nikki Haley or Musafaki of the AU. The Commonwealth plans to send a 42-member team to monitor Zimbabwe's elections. Angola braved the Eurobond market, issuing $500 million to increase its $1.25 billion deal from May. Um, I'm bullish about Angola, as I've said previously. I would rather be seen as a weak president than split the ANC because that is not my mission. My mission is to keep the ANC united and I intend to succeed in having the ANC united. And I agree with Mr. Wildebeest who says it's an incredible admission by the president of South Africa at a moment when it needs leadership. South African all share down 7.25% this year. Dollar Rand, the Rand I think is going to back up a little bit from here, 1323.78.
Hundreds of Nigerian troops are missing after Boko Haram overran a military base in the remote northeast, security sources said on Sunday. Militants invaded a base holding more than 700 soldiers in Yobi State, where they abducted over 100 girls from a school earlier this year. In an hours-long onslaught Saturday night, a military source told AFP on condition of anonymity. Boko Haram terrorists attacked troops of the 81st Division Forward Brigade at Jili Village in Gaida District. The terrorists came in huge numbers around 7.30 p.m., overran the base after a fierce battle that lasted until 9.10 p.m. The base had 734 troops, currently the command of the base, and 63 soldiers have made it to Gaida, while the remaining 670 are being expected, he said, without elaborating on their possible fate. Nigerian all shares now 2.55% this year. The Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is up 11.2% year to date. Credit Suisse is to lend Tanzania $200 million to implement an energy and rail infrastructure projects, the finance ministry has said. Abraj's Africa Fund, which holds uh, Java House, amongst other assets, um, apparently the investors are seeking a new manager group of investors in Abraj Group's near $1 billion sub-Saharan African fund is seeking a new manager, potentially complicating a broader sale process for the embattled firm's asset management unit, according to people familiar with the matter. It's a $990 million Abraj Africa Fund the third, and uh, this is where Java is currently held. Abraj had an unusual business model reliant on short-term borrowing and key financial statements are missing or non-existent, according to a report by PricewaterhouseCoopers seen by Bloomberg last week. The population in Kenya in 1960 was 8,105,440, and it's grown to 49,699,862 in 2017. Have a look at the figures. Deal with corruption for real progress, Obama said on his visit to uh, uh, Kenya. In depth, Chinese goods push Kenya's May import bill to a record high. Nairobi all share is minus 0.08% year to date. The NSE 20 is down 10.38% year to date. The Energy Cabinet Secretary Charles Kater criticized the state crackdown on Kenya power. Visibly angry minister used an occasion at Steamer Plaza last evening to unveil new officials led by acting CEO Jared Omondi of Vienna. Uh, said that although he supported the fight against corruption, the crackdown at the power utility firm that netted 19 top managers was in bad faith and a mockery of the rules of natural justice. I think he's way off message here. Yeah? The CS compared the operation that almost crippled Kenya power to the 1993 fatal plane crash that killed an entire Zambian national football team. It is such a difficult time for me to talk when we have a team of very competent engineers who are not with us. This is like the time Zambia lost a whole football team. A whole senior management team gone is like losing a whole football team. Sometimes you wish you could be that sacrificial lamb for others to survive, especially the innocent ones. I don't want to talk about the merits of the case, as I know the law will take its course, but at times you have to speak out for the innocent, he said. The minister used the opportunity to encourage remaining staff not to be discouraged by the events that led to the arraigning in court of their 19 colleagues. Let's not shy away, let's make decisions that are good for the country. If KP goes down, the whole energy sector collapses. We want to encourage you to be firm and strong. I think it's the, really the most suboptimal approach. You should have looked for somebody fresh to parachute in there and really turn it around. The model about which he's speaking is, in my view, has run out of road. In fact, it's careered off the road. And uh, Cole Tusker picked up on it and he captured this. He said, what do you make of this? Indeed, what are we to make of this? In this photograph, former KPLC MD Ben Chumo, current MD Ken Torres, and other managers are seen in court. They subsequently had a power blackout. Kenya Power, my piece over the weekend, well, please read it in contrast to what the minister was saying. Um, uh, Kenya Power is down about 28% year to date. As Jesse Livermore said, markets are never wrong, only opinions are. 
couldn't agree with that more. 